Taking your first Royal Caribbean cruise is bound to have a number of new experiences for you, including some things you probably didn't expect. Over the years, I've run into a lot of first-time cruisers, people that go on their first Royal Caribbean cruise and then come back with feedback about the things that really stood out to them. Today, I wanted to share with you the nine things that tend to really surprise people on Royal Caribbean. Number one, some things are cheaper if you book it before the cruise. You know, Royal Caribbean sends out a lot of marketing emails to people before their cruise. In fact, these days, it seems like there's like an email every day about a new option you can purchase, whether it's a drink package or a shore excursion or a Wi-Fi package, spot, you get it. You get a lot of emails about that. And if you're like me and you get other emails from other companies, all of those marketing emails tend to blend into each other and also you tend to ignore them more than anything. It's like noise, right? Anyway, when it comes to Royal Caribbean though, yeah, there is obviously a huge marketing aspect to it, but pre-purchasing can actually save you a lot of money on a cruise. Royal Caribbean wants people to spend a lot more money before the cruise. Essentially, the more money spent before the cruise ends up spending more money overall. There's like a whole math to it on Royal Caribbean side, but there is an enticement to actually incentivize guests to book before the cruise. Things like drink packages, and shore excursions and Wi-Fi because they are absolutely cheaper before the cruise and once on board the ship. If you wait to buy them on board the ship, that's okay, but you're going to pay more for them. The drink package especially can cost way more if you purchase it on board than before the cruise. Not to mention the fact it's going to take time out of your vacation to purchase these things. And the savings pre-cruise are actually substantial. More importantly, some things can actually sell out before the cruise like shore excursions so pre-purchasing not only can save you money, but also can ensure you actually get the exact thing that you want. So while all those emails and reminders that you should pre-purchase these items seem like noise, but they're actually pretty important in the grand scheme of making sure that you pre-book as much as you can before the cruise. Another thing that surprises people on Royal Caribbean is you can actually pre-book some of the shows. If you're on an Icon class, an Oasis class, or a Quantum class ship, you can pre-book shows on your ship before the sailing. Now, Pre-booking has no additional cost to it, but it ensures that you're absolutely going to have a chance to see the show in question. About 30 days before your cruise, you should have the option to pre-book shows for those, again, classes of ships we're talking about on the Cruise Planner website or the Royal Caribbean app. Essentially, all you have to do is go in there, grab some seats, and you're good to go. You don't select actual chairs themselves, more just admission into the show. The good news is, again, there's no cost to this and it assures you that you're going to get into that particular showtime. However, if you're late to this or you simply didn't see this ahead of time and there's no other tickets available, not to worry. There are still options to get admission once on board the ship. Look for a box office option once you get on board your Royal Caribbean cruise ship to see about reservations for those shows. But if all else fails, you don't get anything and you say, well, I really want to see these shows on board, you can still see them. All you have to do is get in the standby line. Once on board the ship and about 30 minutes before the showtime, get to the theater and there'll be a standby line there. And again, if you're there about 30 minutes ahead of time, I think you'll have a pretty good chance of getting to that show. But if you're watching this video now, do yourself a favor and pre-book the entertainment because again, there's no cost to pre-book and there's no penalty in case you don't actually show up to the show. Something else that may surprise you is you are allowed to bring some drinks on board your Royal Caribbean cruise. Now, Royal Caribbean does not allow you to bring alcohol on board like beer or liquor, but it does allow you to bring some drinks on board your ship. And that may be a really good way to not only save money, but also provide a more convenient option for you and your family. Let's start off with the fact that you can bring up to 12 bottles or cans, whatever, of non-alcoholic beverages. This includes sodas and juices and bottled water all allowed on embarkation day. That allocation is per cabin, not per person, and you should bring it on embarkation day and your carry-on luggage, not your checked luggage. I need to emphasize this because if you give it to you in your checked luggage, Royal Caribbean Security is going to do the x-ray machine and then realize you got some sort of a bottle in there and they can't tell if that's water or vodka, so they're going to hold your bag back and it's going to result in a major delay of getting your bag delivered to your cabin. So bring it in your carry-on luggage. In addition to that, you're also allowed to bring one bottle of wine or champagne on board your cruise ship per adult in your cabin. And that allows you to bring that bottle of wine or champagne to a restaurant or just enjoy in your cabin. If you bring it to a restaurant or lounge, technically speaking, you're going to be assessed a opening fee for that bottle. In my experience, Royal Caribbean like never enforces that rule, but theoretically, it could happen to you. Nonetheless, bringing your own bottle of wine or champagne on board is going to save you plenty of money because, of course, you're going to pay retail for that back at home as opposed to, of course, paying the onboard prices, which, of course, do come with a markup just like any restaurant you might go to. 
The next thing that might surprise you about going on a Royal Caribbean cruise is what you're not allowed to bring on board. At the end of every cruise, there's usually a table somewhere in the cruise terminal where people can pick up the things that were confiscated by Royal Caribbean pre-cruise. It's actually a little surprising what things people think they can bring on there. And there's a whole list of things Royal Caribbean does not allow you to bring in there. Some things are pretty obvious, right? You can't bring weapons. You can't bring spray paint. You can't bring beer. You can't bring drugs on board. But other things might be very surprising. Chief among them are you can't bring power strips. You know, like a standard power electric strip, like you have a surge protector on it. That's totally not allowed. In fact, most appliances are not allowed at all. Basically, that constitutes a fire hazard. And fire is the number one threat on any cruise ship out there. It's just a very dangerous thing because they contain environment. Anyway, you're not allowed to bring those items on board. So don't bring an iron. That's not allowed. Don't bring a rice cooker. I know, but there's a lot of people that evidently try to bring those things. Don't try to bring an electric blanket. And also don't bring any handcuffs. It's cool if you're into that whole thing back at home, but it's a no-no on a cruise ship because of course handcuffs can be used for other things that have nothing to do with what's happening in your bedroom. In short, check the Royal Caribbean list of prohibited items before your cruise to make sure you're not bringing anything that's going to be confiscated and could be possibly awkward later on. Something else that might surprise you about a Royal Caribbean cruise if you've ever been on one before is that the dress codes aren't nearly as stringent or widely followed. No matter which cruise you sail on, there are going to be certain dress codes for certain evenings of the cruise, and the dress codes primarily refer to the dress codes for things like the main dining room. There are no real dress codes when we're talking about just simply walking around the ship beyond the obvious things like wearing shoes and course clothing but you'll see in the Royal Caribbean app as well as the cruise compass that certain nights have like formal night or white night or Caribbean night and that might make you think boy we got to make sure we have all these clothing items to make sure we can adhere to them the reality is the dress codes aren't nearly as enforced as you might think certainly if you're talking about Caribbean night or white night those are totally optional 70s night 80s night like that's up to you if you want to do that and there are going to be some guests that go for it some people think it's a fun thing to do and it is fun but you have no obligation to follow on 70s night or Caribbean night if you don't want to wear those things. As it relates to the formal dress code and those kinds of things, in reality, there are more guidelines or suggestions than anything else. Now, certainly if you roll into the main dining room on formal night wearing like your bathing suit, you're not going to be allowed in there, I think. But they're really not going to be that picky about what you're wearing in there. So don't feel like it needs to be like a senior prom experience in order to do the main dining room on formal night. Of course, you could always go to the Windjammer instead or another restaurant. Heck, the specialty restaurants have their own dress codes, which supersede the main dining room dress code on any given night. Elsewhere on the ship, like when you're going to one of the lounges or bars or activities on board, man, the dress code does not apply at all. So what this really means is dress codes would be fun. I mean, maybe you and your family want to take some awesome photos together and getting dressed up on formal night is a great way to do that. Maybe you want to go to Target and find those really wacky Caribbean over-the-top shirts that make your family stand out because it's fun to do. That's what a cruise is all about. So if you want to follow them, that is awesome. But don't go into the cruise thinking that there's like the dress code police that are going to put you in trouble if you don't follow those things. I mentioned the main dining room and that leads us to our next thing that might surprise you about a Royal Caribbean cruise is when you're in the main dining room. Don't be afraid to order another appetizer, entree, or dessert. When you look at the menus at most Royal Caribbean restaurants, including the Windjammer, main dining room, and a lot of specialty restaurants, you are absolutely allowed to order more than one appetizer, entree, or dessert. In general, I find that cruise ship dishes tend to be on the smaller side, especially in the main dining room, as opposed to like what you might find back on land. And that allows you to enjoy and indulge a little bit more. Maybe you want to try something new that's new to you anyway, or perhaps you see two different entrees that look really enticing, can't choose between the two of them, order both of them, why not? They're very inviting about that. Obviously, you don't want to waste food, but if you're thinking to yourself, man, I'd really like to have the Caesar salad and the carpaccio, order both. It is totally allowed and there's no additional cost for that. Something else that a lot of new cruisers don't realize is how important it is to bring cash and also small bills on board the ship. You know, Royal Caribbean is a cashless cruise ship, which means when you're going around the ship, cash isn't allowed. You use your sea pass card in order to purchase item. That totally makes sense. The thing is, there's still a role for cash to play on your cruise. First of all, when you get to the cruise terminal, it's customary to tip the porters to take your luggage on board the ship for you. And then, of course, at the end of the cruise, you'll be tipping those same porters when they help you with your luggage afterwards. There's also a need for cash if you're going to the casino. There's also a need for cash to tip maybe a bartender an extra dollar or two if you deem so fit. And then on shore excursions, when you're off the ship and exploring the port, there's a lot of reasons to have cash with you as well. My advice is bring a little bit of cash with you, at least on board, because you can still get more cash on the ship. You can get it from guest services 
or an ATM machine or even the casino, although there are fees associated with all those things. Regardless, there really is a good use of having that. And make sure you bring some small bills, you know, dollar bills, $5 bills, so that way you can easily tip people. It's often customary, you go to the bank, you say, hey, I need to bring, you know, $500. And you take a withdrawal, what are they gonna give you? $500 bills, right? You really need to have smaller bills, which again, you could go to the casino and break them or even get services. But in general, bring small bills, bring a little bit of cash with you on board so you can have it for various circumstances. Speaking of money, you might be really surprised when you go on a roller coaster cruise how expensive drinks really are. So a drink package is an option that's out there, but a lot of first time cruisers might say, listen, I don't drink that much. I'm not sure I'll need a drink package. I'm gonna rely on the drinks that are included and maybe purchase a cocktail here or there. And that, by the way, is totally fine, but it might still surprise you how expensive drinks are on a cruise. If you wanna buy that pina colada to have for sale away, to have that iconic cruise drink, I'm totally with you on that. Just understand it's gonna cost you after taxes and gratuity, like $14. That's not unusual, that's just basically what the cost is of those drinks on board. Beers are like $8, and then you add gratuity on top of that. Anyway, it all adds up. Now again, if you're buying two drinks a day, that's totally fine because two drinks a day, you're not really gonna rack up that much of a bill, but if you're in that four or five drink range, a drink package might start to make sense on there. Regardless of that, you wanna budget appropriately, so understand that of course, drinks on a cruise ship are not gonna be dirt cheap. And the last thing that might really surprise you about going on a roller coaster cruise, and I think cruises in general, is how short shore excursions really are. When you're planning your cruise, you're looking at all these various ports you can go to, Aruba, Puerto Rico, Cosmo, Mexico, Rome. These all sound like amazing places, and they are. But the amount of time you actually have is not as long as it may seem. First of all, when you look at your schedule and it lists the hours that you're there, in some cases like Puerto Rico, you can only be there for a couple of hours. It's not uncommon to arrive at like one o'clock and then have to leave at like nine. But more importantly, when you're looking at the hours, no matter what times they are, those are the times you dock, not the times you can actually be offshore. So when your cruise ship docks at a given time, it takes time for the ship to actually physically dock, tie up, and then get cleared by local authorities. Usually that takes about half an hour or so, maybe a little bit more. So that's gonna cut out time from when you can actually get off the ship. And then on the flip side, when it's time to get back on board, the time that you see there listed for when your ship is gonna be in port until is actually the time that your ship is gonna leave. So you need to be back on board like at least half an hour before that time. So again, keeping in mind that you're gonna be a little bit before those times, you're gonna have less time in port than you might think. In a lot of cases, the logistics of actually getting into port, boarding a bus and all those kinds of things eat into a lot of the time that you have to spend there. So when you're planning your days in port, you wanna be efficient with your time and prioritize the most important things. In some cases, you may only have a couple of hours to really take advantage of what's there. And by virtue of what a cruise really is, it's designed to give you a taste of those places. It's not like you're gonna be there you know, for three days unless you're doing an overnight itinerary. Those are pretty rare with Royal Caribbean. So essentially keep in mind that when you're going to a particular port, you're not there for a ton of time, but enough time to probably see the major attraction or two. So there you have a look at the nine things that might surprise someone who's brand new to Royal Caribbean. Let me know in the comments below when you took your first cruise, what really stood out to you? What was really like, wow, I didn't expect that when you went on a Royal Caribbean cruise, good or bad. Sometimes there's a lot of things that really do stand out that are truly positive. Like how many amazing things you can do on board your cruise ship, how awesome the shows are, and of course, how much food you're probably gonna end up eating. Let me know in the comments below what really stood out to you. While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.